Welcome to Life Church Panania. Thank you for being here with us today. It's great that we can come together to worship. Eleanor and I aren't at Life Church Panania today. We're on our final week of study leave, but we're looking forward to being back next week. It'll be great. However, today's theme is the gospel is good news. Well, the gospel means good news, and the gospel is indeed good news. And we're going to explore a little of that today. But let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you for the good news. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care about us. Thank you that you don't leave us to our own devices. Thank you that you welcome us into your presence. Thank you that you forgive and you fill us with grace and and you're generous to us beyond anything we could imagine. Thank you for the good news of the gospel. Thank you that you invite us into your kingdom. Thank you that Jesus is indeed king over all, and we can trust him with our lives and with our eternity. And so we come and celebrate you in his name. Amen. We've got a couple of great songs that celebrate the kingdom of God. Here is the first one. Let's sing together, Let Your Kingdom Come.
Indeed, the kingdom has come. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is alive and flourishing. So what do we do? We live for the kingdom. We live for King Jesus. Let's sing Live for the Kingdom. can truly live, live life to the fullest in him. Now, what's coming up? Today is Myanmar Morning Tea Day. We have a a mission to Myanmar. And so we have a great morning tea once a month to celebrate all that we have in the gospel. And that enables us to be able to share with others more effectively. So I hope you're going to have a great morning tea today. And remember, God's blessings to you and Be encouraged to share with others. And then next Sunday, we'll be gathering together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, remembering why there is good news, because Jesus died and rose again. And that's our focus next Sunday. But for now, can I pray for you? Father, you know our needs, you you know our spiritual needs, you know our need to be free of sin, You you know our need to be forgiven by you, you know us through and through, you know our weaknesses, you know our strengths, you know our hopes, our fears and our joys. Thank you that we are an open book to you and we can rely upon you to not only know us but to love us through and through. And love us enough to not leave us where we are, but to 
fill us with your spirit to transform us into all that we can be, all that we want to be as we grow into maturity. So thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we pray for ourselves. We pray for one another that we would be conscious of you in such a way that we would we would be drawn, we would want to grow up to be more and more like Jesus. We, we pray for uh, not only ourselves and each other, but for our world, a broken world where there is so much stress. As we move into summer, Ukraine and Russia are moving into winter and it will be terrible circumstances for countries at war. Oh, Lord, bring your peace. Bring the good news of the gospel into that place. Overthrow darkness and bring light and life to where there is darkness and death. And not only there, but around the world and in, in so many smaller ways. There are so many people who struggle with their own weaknesses or frailties or difficult circumstances or, or people that are so hard to cope with. Oh, Lord, be gracious and merciful. Give us resilience, strength, and an inner dynamic to keep moving forward, to, to not give up, to not give in, but rather to keep on reaching out to you and finding that all you have for us is adequate and more than adequate for everything we face every day. And so we bring ourselves and each other and our world to you with all our needs in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to be able to share good news, the gospel with others, and our gifts are a way of doing that. And you can do that, and thank you to those who do do this, by supporting Life Church Manania. Um, you can do it with a check through the mail. Oh, they're cutting out checks. That's going to make it difficult. You can do it online, either direct to the church or, in some cases, direct to through the church to our Myanmar mission. We're going to sing again. We've got a couple of songs that celebrate the amazing grace that God has for us in saving us from our sins and bringing us into his kingdom. And he does it only by grace. Let's sing.
the wonderful grace of God, the amazing grace of God. And again, we're going to sing that amazing grace frees me from my chains. Let's sing. And now we're going to turn to God's Word. We're going to open up the Scriptures. We've got a couple of readings. They're both very short. And so we're going to pull them together from 1 Thessalonians and from 2 Corinthians. So hear the Word of the Lord. God has not appointed us to suffer wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. 
Therefore, encourage and build one another up, just as you are already doing. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting anyone's trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our guest speaker today is John Piper, and he's going to share with us what the gospel is. What's the gospel? Put it in a sentence. The gospel is the news that Jesus Christ, the righteous one, died for our sins. Rose again, eternally triumphant over all his enemies, so that there is now no condemnation for those who believe, but only everlasting joy. That's the gospel. Never, you never, now listen to this, you never, 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 never outgrow your need for the gospel. Don't ever think of the gospel as that's the way you get saved. And then... You get strong by leaving it and doing something else. No. We are strengthened by God through the gospel every day till the day we drop. You never outgrow your need to preach to yourself the gospel. I'll close with one illustration and you all remember it if you were here. And I, I use it not because it's any big deal to speak from my life, but because it's what I've walked through and where I most pointedly in the last year experienced the power of the gospel to make me strong. Now, many of you are walking through things much heavier than prostate cancer. Much heavier. You remember the verses that I shared with you back in February that were just almighty for me? It was that moment of, of right after the, the uh, biopsy comes back, the doctor's sitting there. I mean, actually, he's on the telephone. But it was when he said, I think we need to do a biopsy. That moment when this stab of fear comes. Didn't last long, mercifully. And then came what? 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, and 10. It's just as pure gospel as you can get. He has not destined you for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for you, so that whether you wake or sleep, you will live with Him. Settled. Peace like a river. That's just gospel. Perfectly timed, perfectly applied, perfectly suited to my need. And that's why the Bible is so thick is because there's so many different needs that you have and there's suitable places where the gospel is unfolded for you so that if you immerse yourself in the whole book always with an eye to what Christ has wrought for you and purchased for you in this thick, glorious history of God's interaction with people, He will give you what you need. Therefore, 
everything in me says and hopes to say till the day I die, now unto him who is able to strengthen me according to Paul's gospel, to him, to that God, be glory forever and ever. God came into history in Jesus Christ. He died in order to destroy the power of hell and death and Satan and sin. And He did it through the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So, I know that there are people watching this video and in this room who are not trusting Jesus Christ and therefore can only expect condemnation. And so I'm just going to plead with you here at the end. Lay down that rebellion. Lay it down. And simply embrace the gospel that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Righteous One, died for your sins. He was raised on the third day, triumphant over all His enemies. He reigns until He puts all of His enemies under His feet. Forgiveness of sins and a right standing with God comes freely through Him alone, by faith alone. And therefore, I plead with you, don't try to be strong in your own strength. It will not be there when you need it. Only one strength will be there when you need it. The strength that God gives according to the gospel. Don't put it off. We're going to respond to that message, and we're going to do so by singing Scripture. The Scripture is Romans 5.1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing those words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of reconciliation of the gospel. 
Thank you for being with us today. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the good news of the gospel. May it fill us up, not just to save us from our sin or to save us from hell, not just to take us into heaven, but to transform us every single day. Oh, Lord, give us the good news that makes us more and more like Jesus as well as a home forever with him. And so may it be that we live out faith, hope and love in action. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let someone know that you went to church online today. And by whatever means you, you choose to use, let someone know. Tell them about the good news that you've experienced. And then let's have a great Myanmar morning tea. Until next week, God bless.